Ladies and gentlemen, here he is, world-renowned, galactically famous, the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Ellis! So um, what you're going to work on today is a little bit different. Um, it's actually the thing that we're going to talk about and learn next week, but I'm going to give you a head start so that you can go ahead and start like understanding or at least processing what it is we're going to be doing. So that way when we get to it, it should be much easier for you. Um, unfortunately, I'm going to have to do this in two parts because there's kind of a, a, a build up and then the actual piece. Um, but I think you're going to actually like this because it's so systematic. All you got to do eventually once we get there is just plug things where they go, type in stuff into your calculator, hit enter, that kind of a thing. So hopefully it'll end up being actually pretty good for you. But in order to kind of get you started at where you need to be, the first part that we're going to have to know how to do, and this is something we've done in the past, is we're going to have to know how to find the A, the B, and the C value of a quadratic. I don't know why my thumb was up. Just those three things. So if you look on the note sheet that you have, you should have uh, quadratic formula notes. This should be the first one. So make sure you have that. Actually, I'll probably put a one beside that by tomorrow. Maybe not. I don't know. Just make sure it looks like this or else you have the wrong thing. So boo. Um, so uh, the standard form of a quadratic is ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. We know this, right? The a value is the number that's in front of the x squared. That's a, where you'd put x squared right there. And the b value is the number in front of the x, the x right there. And then the C value is the number that's left by itself. It's the one that has no variable. So there's three main parts to a quadratic. You've got to know which one is which, the A, the B, and the C. Again, something we've done before, so hopefully that at least sounds familiar to you. So if you look on the kind of examples that are listed there, on this first one over here, it says 2x squared plus 6x plus 8 equals 0. So if I asked you what's the A value, what I'm saying is what's the coefficient or the number that's in front of the x squared. That would be a 2, because it's right there, and you can see with your eyes that that's a 2. And then the B value is the number in front of the X, just an X, the one that's just an X. And that would be a 6, because it's right there, and you can see, hopefully. If you can't, then, well, I have to fix that. Okay, C is um, the number that's by itself, and that would be the 8. So that would be the 8. So that's all it is. You just got to know which one is which. Um, for this next one, just to, a couple of things to make sure that you're aware of the one in the middle. There's nothing in front of that x squared, right? So it's not a zero. It's an invisible one. So anytime that you have just the x squared or just the x or something like that, we know that the number in front of it is just an invisible one. Um, and then this one in the middle, the b value, the number in front of the x, notice how it's not just a five. It's a negative 5. That minus in sign that's in front of it makes it a negative 5. So just be careful with that as well. So two things just to be careful of that can kind of get wonky sometimes. Go. That's weird. Okay. Um, is the two things that can get weird sometimes. If there's nothing in front of it, just know that that means it's a 1. And if there's a minus sign, that makes it negative. Uh, the C value here is still 3. And for some reason, this is lagging, and that's going to make me mad. But I'm just going to carry on because there it is. Whatever. Um, the one that's beside it says 5x squared minus 9 equals 0. Um, you've got to figure out the one thing that's weird about that one is notice how it's missing that piece. Like the a value is obviously 5, and the c value is obviously negative 9. Oh my goodness, this is chaos, and this is terrible, and I should probably redo this video, but I don't want to, because it's late, and I want to go home. But you can't go home, because you have to be in math class and learn stuff. So the A value is 5, but notice the thing that's missing is the X, right? This 9 is by itself. That makes it a C value. Even though it's the second thing on this one, like... It's just a number, so that makes it the C value as negative 9. The B value is the one that's not there, right? The X is the thing that's missing, 
And so if something's completely missing, then we know it's a zero. Um, so that's how all of that works. Good? Hopefully. Um, all right, so what this says underneath it, it says that before we can find the A, B, and the C, we've got to make sure that this thing is in standard form. Standard form. Meaning that we have to make sure it equals zero. And this is another skill that we've practiced before, but I want to make sure that we're good with it. These are like kind of warm-up skills to get to where we want to go. You've got to make sure that you can set it equal to zero before you start trying to find the A, B, and the C. Because if I look at this one, if I start trying to figure out the A, the B, and the C, I'm going to get it wrong. Because if I just put what's there, like with that 8, well, it's going to change once I move it to standard form. Once I get it equal to zero, things are going to change. So I can't do that yet. I need to make sure it equals zero first. And if it doesn't, then whatever it does equal, you need to move. So it equals 8 right now, so I need to move that 8. It's, it's not, I need to make that 0, so I need to get it out of the way. The same way that we've always moved stuff, we just use opposite operations. So to move an 8, I have to subtract 8. But if I subtract it from one side, I also have to subtract it from the other side. Now, in this case, you notice you have an x squared plus 4x on the other side. I can't subtract 8 from any of those things because they're not like terms. Right, this is an x squared and this is an x. I can only subtract the 8 from another constant, a normal number. There isn't another normal number there. So I just kind of put that minus 8 where it would go. So I'm finished, I'll finish it up with x squared plus 4x minus 8 equals 0. So like it would go right here. That's where that normal number would be. So I just put that minus 8 there. So now I have it in standard form, and I could figure out what the a, the b, and the c values are, right? Uh, the one beside that, not under it, but beside that, says negative 3x squared equals negative 5x plus 2. So it doesn't equal 0. It equals negative 5x plus 2, and that's a bad thing. So I need to take both the negative 5x and the 2, and I need to move them back to the other side. So I'm going to add the 5x to both sides. Remember, you do opposite operations. So if it was a minus, we're going to make it a plus. Add the 5x to this side. Again, be careful because an x and an x squared, those are not the same things. So I need to make sure that I'm not combining those. They're not like terms. I just kind of put them beside each other where they should go. By the way, also, I need to move my 2. Um, you could do that in a different step, or you can just all do it at once. I'm just going to do it at once because who cares? It's a plus 2. The opposite of that is minus 2. So I'm also going to be subtracting 2 from the other side. So I've got my negative 3x squared. That's going to stay the same. Then I'm adding the 5x to both sides. So I'm just going to tack that on as a plus 5x. right? And I'm also going to be subtracting this 2 from both sides. So I'm going to tack that on as a minus 2. Now we equal 0, so we're good to go. So both of these up at the top, those are examples of when you try and add or subtract something that's not there, and you just kind of tack it on. You just put it where it's supposed to go. The ones on the bottom are a little bit different because they're ones where you already have something in that spot. So uh, the first one over here says x squared plus 2x plus 6 equals negative 4. So if I wanted to solve, or if I wanted to make sure that it equals 0, which it doesn't right now, it equals negative 4, I've got to move that negative 4. How do I move a negative 4? by doing the opposite and adding 4 to both sides. Now this one's pretty cool because when I go to add the 4 to the other side, notice how there's already a 6 that's right there. So that just means I need to combine those, leave everything else alone, so it's x squared plus 2x, and now I can actually combine like terms. A 6 and a 4, those are both c values. They need to be combined. It becomes a 10, and now we can do our a, b, and c. And then on the other end, we can do the same idea where we've got two things I've got to move, but I have a place to put them this time. So a negative 2x squared means, okay, we've got to move it using the opposite of minus, which is plus. But when I add that 2x squared over here, notice I already have that x squared. So plus 2x squared. x squared plus 2x squared, I could put those together, and that makes a 3x squared. I'm going to leave my minus 2x because I'm not doing anything with that, so I can just stay there. 
And then I've got this plus two that's over here. I need to do something with it. So I'm gonna subtract the two. And notice how I have something to combine it with as well. So six minus two is gonna give me a positive four. Now we're equal to zero. So that's the whole idea here is can you move things so that it equals zero? And then once you do that, can you identify the A, the B, and the C? For example, that last one I just did, once I moved everything, my A value is now a three, my B value is now a negative two, and my C value would be a four. And those are things that we're gonna to need to know to do the rest of it. So on the back of that, I'll kinda of let you work on it on your own. I won't keep talking and annoying you too much. There's a couple of problems back here. For all of these problems, all you wanna do here is to make sure that it equals zero, and then find the A, the B, and the C. So it's exactly what we just did. It just kinda of combines those two things. Um, for instance, I'll do, oh, hi. Welcome to my class. Okay, so I just had someone walk into my classroom and it kind of threw things off, but instead of starting this whole thing over, I'm just gonna try and cut this in post-production and keep on moving, because I wanna go home. I'm tired. But you don't care about that. Okay, um, so on the back, these are just some examples for you to do, and we're gonna, uh, I'll do the first one with you, and then I'll let you do the rest. So it says two x squared minus five x plus five equals negative four. Find the A, the B, and the C. Well, we can't do that yet, obviously, because it's not equal to zero. So just make sure you set it equal to zero first. In order to do that, I need to add the four to both sides. So two x squared minus five x, five plus four is gonna be a plus nine. Now it equals zero. The A value here is two, so that goes where the A value is. The B value here is negative five, that goes where the B value is. And the C value here is nine, that goes where the C value is. Just remember that if something's completely missing, like there is no X or there is no C, just put a zero where it goes. But I think you can figure that out. If you need help, let me know, raise your hand, ask questions, whatever. And then we'll, uh, I'll let you work on this, and when you finish it, there's a second part that I want you to kind of to, to come pick up and work on, and we'll learn about the quadratic formula. Big times, exciting times. I'm flying away, because I want to go home. But I gotta do a second video, so I'll see you in a second.